Hi, I'm Amanda, and thank you for joining me today with Talk It Up. Today I'm going to speak with someone who has shown us that we can overcome any obstacle, no matter how far down the pit we've gone, we can rise above that. This gentleman has proven that over time, if you take responsibility, personal responsibility, if you put your mind to it, you can do anything you want to do. I have uh, Matt Hirschberg with me today. And Matt has written a book called Bad Medicine. And I was so inspired by this book that I asked Matt to join me today so we could talk about this. It truly is amazing what Matt has been through. Um, Matt had a wonderful childhood. The rest of us had a wonderful childhood. And somehow along the way, Matt just got on the wrong path. And from a life of crime and addiction and felonies and prison time, Matt rose above that. He has become an outstanding citizen, someone who has tons to offer to the community. And we want to talk about that today and see your story, how you rose above that, what you've done, and how you're making such a difference in other people's lives. Because you made a difference in mine. I, I love the book. So Matt, um, you grew up in a house that was very privileged. You sure. were a privileged yeah, person. Very much so. And Somewhere along the line, though, you took a wrong turn. I did, you know, um, and again, you know, my dad was actually Winchester's first plastic surgeon. Uh, so you could definitely say that I didn't want for anything, and I had whatever opportunities I wanted before me. Right. Uh, and, you know, in middle, in elementary school, I was really the coolest kid I knew, you know. I mean, <laughs> I was, seemed like I had my act together. I got good grades, had tons of friends. But my first day of middle school, I quickly realized something changed over that summer. I don't understand how it changed, but I went from being the coolest kid I knew to all but ostracized from my friends. I began getting bullied for my privilege status. And I just didn't know how to cope. Um, right. You know, I, I really tried everything that I could think of just to fit in. You know, I tried being an athlete and bless my heart, I tried and tried and tried, but it was just a no go. <laughs> right. And it stumbled me down a life of drugs and, and crime and ultimately to what became my first career is a gangsta you know and I was actually pretty good at it for a while <laughs> um, uh, until one day I woke up uh, with a ten thousand dollar a month drug habit and awaiting a four-year federal prison sentence right so it's a lot to deal with that's a whole lot to deal with so to back it up a little sure. to see where you've been and where you are mm -hmm. now tell me how because of all that how did you actually decide a career in the fitness industry, though? What led you from that to this? So I was introduced to fitness uh, two years into my federal prison sentence. Um, at that point in time, I had gained 100 pounds, so I was 100 pounds overweight. I was on six different antidepressant, anti-anxiety medications. Wow. And they actually thought that I potentially may have a leaking heart valve. Wow. Uh, you know, they took me, I had a stress test done, uh, brought me back to to the compound and I was kind of venting uh, with a mentor of such that really took me under his wing uh, the entire time I was in prison. And he happened to used to be a personal trainer. So as I tell him my sob story about poor woe me and all these kinds of things, he paused and he was like, have you ever thought about working out? I was like, well, no, why would I do that? So I thought about it for a couple days and uh, I went back to him and asked if I was to do that, you know, what would that look like and how would I even begin? So he got me started on a walking program. Right. And sure enough, one thing led to another and I started to feel better. Right. Uh, so he continued to work with me on my nutrition, started adding in weights. I coordinated with my psychiatrist to slowly get off all the medications and just spent a lot of time working on me. And for the first time in my life, I had some sort of identity and a start of being okay with me. Now you're talking about all this took place in prison. Yes. This was in prison. This yeah. was not outside of prison. No, this was... So this mentor was someone that you were jailed with. Absolutely. Yes. How amazing is that? That yeah. that you were put with that person. Yeah. It was um... terrible circumstances. Good for you though. Yeah. At that point. Yeah. You know. So that brings me to a question of you became an addict. You were addicted to many things: the money, the greed the drugs, the glory, what you felt was self-esteem and power. Sure. So, you know, a lot of kids today are bullied. 
that's that's just society's way right now. Everybody has a reason they bully someone. Statistics show that there are two main reasons people are bullied. One is because they are poor. They can't dress like you and I dress. They can't, you know, they live they have like, you know, reduced meals at lunch, things like that. And so they're bullied for that, which is sad. Okay? Then there's people like you who are very privileged mm -hmm. and they're bullied for that reason, which you know, scientists say and psychologists say it's because it's a jealousy issue with other kids. So the only way they know how to belittle you is to bully and make you feel as bad as they feel about not being in your situation. Okay? So my question for you to think about how what is what is your thinking on children who are bullied who become addicts? Do you think you would have been an addict and led that life had you not been bullied? Or do you think you were pre um, genetically mm -hmm. predispositioned to become an addict. What what do you think? I mean, science is divided on that. Sure. Either you have the gene or you don't. Mm -hmm. But do you think you were kind of forced into it, or do you think it would have happened anyway? Well, let me answer the first part of the question. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, as far as bullying is concerned, you know, it, it is it is a problem. It is, um, a problem. and it's not just a problem with our youth. Uh, adults are bullied all the time. They are. You're you know, right. It's not something that that really goes away, and I think that. Uh, it boils down to uh, is the hostility and, and, and jealousy and all these feelings that people don't know what to do with. Uh, so they tend to project them or take them out on other individuals right. uh, to, for self-validation. I mean, right. they're looking for self-validation and, and it's almost as if uh, someone when they're drowning, you know, they're, they're just trying to stay above water. They don't think about who they're pulling down or really what their actions directly are. Oftentimes, I don't believe it's malicious. It's Correct. it's their coping mechanism. Mm -hmm. um, now, as far as uh, the addiction piece, you know, I, I think there is a very real thing when it comes to uh, genetic predisposition. You know, Correct. about 50 percent of uh, the addiction cycle does come from genes. You mm -hmm. know, but just you know, as high cholesterol or anything like that, just because you're predisposed, it doesn't doom you to to have right. to uh, battle that for your entire life. You need to be more aware of it, you're more susceptible. So I think in my specific case, you know, I don't have a huge family history of addiction. Some, uh, some alcoholism. So that may have came, came into play. Uh, I think for me, it was a lack of coping skills. You know, I really, uh, I think the drugs were secondary. You know, I, I think I was just looking for some type of way to one, uh, elevate my status, Correct. you know, to try to fit in, and two, escape what I was feeling, because it was just horrible. It was not um, a warm and fuzzy rainbows and unicorns kind of thing, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, I just wanted that to go away. And so, so what made you change then? Why, why did you? You could have done your present time, and you could have actually picked someone in there that was not a mentor to you, but someone who was going to say, now next time this is how you do it, and I get caught. Yeah. You know what I mean? So what made you decide that, you know what, this isn't for me, I, I need something different? Well, for me, I, I was actually clean when I went to federal prison. You know, I decided to, to change my lifestyle uh, six to 12 months before the federal indictments came out. You know, okay. I got a job, I uh, started dating uh, girl who introduced me to church and you know I was ready to sell off in the sunset a changed right. man and uh, you know I, even though I had made a couple good decisions those few good decisions were not enough to offset the hundreds of poor ones I had previously made right you know um, so what initiated that change is for me the writing was on the wall that what I was looking for was not down the path I was headed right I, you know I exhausted my search and again, most people are not searching for drugs per se, you know, uh, they're searching f for something, um, whether that be uh, self-validation or escaping some horrible trauma in their life, uh, or sometimes it's just an innocent thing that they were introduced to right. uh, through, through medication from a surgery and just something that quick clicks within them that now they they have to own that and, and battle it so for me it was a choice that I didn't know what I was going to do but I knew what I currently was doing was not going to yield the result that I so desperately wanted right so um, you set your mind to creating a better you period 
And you did have a hard journey. In, in your book, it's so obvious that your whole journey through this was up and down and up and down and up and down. The time you thought you had something in place, that would fall apart. So then you would do something else and that would fall apart. So tell me what the journey was like um, for you when you were a six-time convicted felon, okay, and you're wanted. At one point, sure. you were wanted, you escaped, you were on the run. So what was that like? I mean, how, how did that affect your, how did that affect you as a person with the goals you wanted, and yet now here you are, you know, um, trying to escape that kind of a past. Tell me how that fits all in. Well, to be honest with you, it was a, a, an improbable journey, if you will. Uh, you know, and um, yeah, I'd love to to share more about that. You know, and mm -hmm. I anticipate really open up about that at our upcoming event. Yep, you know, absolutely. Along, along with some other really key things. Mm -hmm. But when you're in the midst of that, you know, it's um, you can't see the big picture. So, right. so from now, you looking back and you read this roller coaster of events, which it was. You know, absolutely. this these constant, as you said, ups and downs. When you're in the thick of it, you're just in, you're in the now, right. right? It's just it's just this piece, and you can't step back and see that, right. you know. So oftentimes, especially with any type of addiction or uh, problematic uh, relationships that people are in, when you're there, you can't see it. <clears throat> Outside looking in, right. it's so obvious, and mm -hmm. that's why you know when you get into uh, some of these things that they really affect the, the entire family unit and your whole context here because people are so desperately trying to help you. Mm -hmm. And to them, it's obvious that you're just imploding and self-destructing. Um, and to you, it's not. To, to you, you it's everything not. is fine. Yeah, I'm good. Leave me be. <laughs> yeah, I've got a plan in place, and it's, it's working right. great for me right now. That's right. So, what do you tell? other people now I mean we, we were going you know going to say younger yeah. people but you know it is everyone it's yeah. it's people your age my mm -hmm. age older what do you tell people now when you see them heading in this spiral mm -hmm. what do you say what how do you address them I try to give people information okay. to hopefully make a better decision right you know um, one thing I know is it's really hard to change someone's mind right once they've made it up right. but what's easier and oftentimes more effective is giving them new or different information which allows them to potentially make a different choice hmm. you know so I really try to focus on making sure they're informed about the path they're headed down right. and then really dig into what is it they're looking for you know um, not what is it have they that they've settled for I think one of the saddest things uh, that uh, I see is people who have given up on themselves and settle for a life of mediocrity. Right. You know, and, and that's I see it. that a lot. You yeah. know, and if you can get somebody to dig back down and, and dig those dreams up from their childhood or from wherever they came from and spark just a little bit of belief in those to get them headed down a path in pursuit of something great it's a lot more probable that they will be successful than trying right. to scare them out of right. headed down a path of destruction. Right. Which, see, which is why I wanted to talk to you today. You are <laughs> such an inspiration. And it is nice to hear someone who's been there because then you are able to help a little better than just to say, you know, that's wrong, right? You know? Yeah. So, yes, I think it's such great. And I love the book, Bad Medicine. Make sure, and everybody get the book. So let's talk just a little bit about, um, you are coming to Harvest Moon mm -hmm. and he is going to talk about his book and the journey he's been on and able to, you're able to purchase the book while you're here and have him do a book signing, yeah, which is fabulous sure. too. And that's going to be September 30th Correct. from 10 until 12. We'll definitely advertise that for mm -hmm. you and try fabulous. to get some people in here. But I would just love for everybody to come and just hear your story. It is, it is so uplifting and so encouraging that no matter where we've been, I mean, hey, you know, 90% of us have never been where you are, and yet we think, oh my gosh, our life is so awful and I can't have anything I want. Really? Look where you've been and look where you are. So Matt, tell us what we can expect from your lecture at Harvest Moon on September 30th. 
I'm going to share a little bit about my story. I'm going to kind of set, set the stage to make sure everybody really has a feel for who I am uh, in, in my journey to an extent. But I, the main focal point of the event is not going to be on me. It's going to be on the people that are attending. Right. I'm going to share the top three life lessons that I learned throughout that journey and how people can leverage those lessons and apply them to their current situation. Great. So there's going to be actionable items that they can walk away that day and whatever it is that they're currently battling in life, they're going to have some things in place that will allow them to take back their life. Right. Great. I look forward to it. I'm excited and I'm Stoked. happy to see you there. Yeah. Yes. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate you being here. Thank you for being so honest in your book. That had to be a great leap to put it all out there in front of everyone. So I appreciate that, as I'm sure lots of people will appreciate that. So thank you so much. Thank you for having me. You're welcome.